Hello everyone and uh, welcome to our video about some tips for passing the CPA exam. Um, I assembled these ideas for you uh, based on over 25 years of being a student and being a, uh, being a teacher supporting candidates to write professional exams, especially the CPA. And I think that one of the most important things to keep in mind is that an exam, a professional exam, not only tests your knowledge, it also tests your ability to apply that knowledge within a specific period of time and under, under some stressful situations. Let's, let's put it this way. So what I'd like to do is I want to share with you some of the few tips. Hopefully, when you are studying for the preparing for the exam and studying and going to sit for the exam, those tips might come in handy. The first thing is I want to remind you is that the CPA exam is a journey, not a destination. It's actually part of your ongoing professional life. It's a certification which is extremely important, but please keep in mind all the time that this is your primary objective is to pass the exam and continue on with your professional life. So you need, need to put that into perspective. There is life after that exam and after passing the exam. So in order to do that, you do need to prepare well. And by preparing well, by what I mean is it's not enough to study. It's how to study and how quickly can you apply your knowledge. So one of the most important things when you prepare well is your core knowledge. You know, the material, you need to know your accounting, you need to know your auditing, and so on and so forth. That's very important. But equally as important is once you know the material is how quickly can you apply it and get the benefit out of it, which means that you need to have uh, what, what I'd like to call discipline. Discipline, for example, means that um, some people find it easy to study every day. They say, I'm going, even though I have work, I have family, I have kids, I'm going to study one or two hours a day. Others will find it very helpful uh, to just do everything on the weekend. Whatever your style is, but I would, need, I, I would recommend that you think that studying is like going to the gym. If you don't go for a while and then you go suddenly, you're going to feel the after effects the second day. So once you decide to commit for this exam, develop a certain healthy studying discipline, which means could, what, what I found very useful for me when I was a student is I would like, even though I was working, I would say every day I'm going to have during work days, I'm going to have even one to two hours of studying, and then I will dedicate the weekend for that. You also need an understanding family. If you're married, you need to, and you have children, or if you have, you're have, you living in with your parents, uh, one of the things that family needs to understand is that there is going to be some sacrifices in the short term to get long-term benefits in terms of maybe not going on every weekend and you know and and preparing for the next six months very very focused studying and so on so family also plays a part your social social environment also plays a part and everybody needs to understand what's what's in it for the when you are taking a professional exam um Time management is key. The exam not only tests your knowledge, the exam tests your knowledge and how quickly you can apply your knowledge. And you may think that, oh, well, if I have four hours, that's plenty of time. It's not. It's going to go as it will be probably the fastest time that you will go through in your exam when you are writing that exam. So again, time management is important, which means that not only when you are practicing, practicing problems or practicing multiple choice questions, it's not only important to get the right answer and why did you get the right answer, but it's equally important to get uh, the ability to answer the, uh, these questions within the allotted time frame for the exam. Now, what does this mean? This means that you are expected to prepare, you're expected to study, and so on and so forth, right? So the important thing to keep in mind, however, is the following. When you are actually preparing, there is a very important component that we sometimes forget, is that we are not alone. What do I mean by that? It means you have access to resources, right? So these resources give you Plenty of, act, plenty of support. Now, the support could be academic through your professors. It could be, uh, uh, it could be also through the material, uh, online support, the material that you have, the practices. But it also could be that you may choose to have maybe one or two study partners. 
so that at least you can motivate each other. Look, you're going to go, go through some days, which is ups and downs, but at the end of the day, on a down day, it, it will be good to understand that you are not alone and there is a, a network of support that is, that is there for you, be it from the academic side or be it from the personal side. So again, if you're the kind of person who would like to study in a group, one thing I do encourage you to do is to look for a couple of people who are, even they may not be in the same country, you can create a WhatsApp group and, and, and through social media coordinate with each other. So with that, I'd like to leave you with two thoughts that, are in, that I always tell my, uh, my students. Number one is luck is when opportunity meets preparation. So create your own luck be prepared, You're, you have the opportunity to write the exam, so please be prepared for it. And last but not least, take it as a journey, if, as if you're going hiking or you're going to the mountain. So learn, improve your skills, and most importantly, enjoy, and hopefully you will reap the benefits when you pass the exam. I wish you all the best, and good luck.